Does this not just add more like concrete evidence that agents just don't know what the hell they're doing? Sorry, agents. But here you are, you've got an agent that's struggling on a listing that could have solved the problem and gotten paid in the process. And the only thing they were taught was put a stick in the yard, put it on the MLS and accept cash offers. That's the only thing they've learned, right? So outside of that, they don't know what they're doing. Hey guys, I'm here with Josh Bowenzi and Kevin Cho, 12 on Instagram. He's unbelievable, he's amazing. I've put a lot of pressure on this guy to sell me 50 deals in Maricopa County and Pinal County and 15 deals outside of the state. Have you done any outside of the state this year? Two in Vegas. Yeah, no, oh yeah, two in Vegas and four in Texas. Four in Texas, so we're at, uh, dude. And one in Florida. He's gonna make probably six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars this year and Josh is gonna make probably 150 to 200 thousand dollars a year as a 19 year old, as a 19 year old. And what we're gonna talk about today in this video is the anti-real estate agent strategy that we just came up with today, <laughs> okay? What do I mean by that? We're gonna to talk to you about how this house was listed with an agent and Josh and Kevin and Chris Jean-Baptiste that's right here called the, called the agent for months, called the agents for months, called the agents for months, and the agent never pitched creative finance to the seller. And the agent said, seller's not interested, seller's not interested, seller's not interested. The first hour that this house went off market, what did the seller say to you? The seller said, we're very interested. In very <laughs> interested. Went from the agent saying, no, 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 to the second that this was an expired listing, Josh called the seller. Josh and Kevin are partners on this deal. They assigned it to me. They made 10,000 bucks. And we'll go through the story in this video and hopefully you guys enjoy it. So where'd this deal, went? Where'd this deal come from? I, I called it. It went off market, and then an hour later, I called the sellers directly okay. because I'd just been looking at this house probably for So a Josh year. has an advantage. What's, what's Josh's advantage over most people? I'm, agent. I'm an agent. He's an agent. Oh. Yeah. The only advantage to being an agent, in my opinion, <laughs> is that. Yeah, I checked, I checked the MLS, so it was gone. So your MLS gives you all the expired listings, mm -hmm. and you immediately call the seller an hour after it goes unlisted. Mm -hmm. Great strategy. It's one of the best strategies ever. Mm -hmm. And I get people go, man, I... I was on a live the other day and this girl goes, man, I keep submitting offers to agents. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, why are you doing that? Like, why not just go after expired? Yeah. So what did the seller say? So the seller says, oh, this is great. Um, and Angelica was the agent's name. She brought it up, but they never went for it with Angelica because Angelica made it seem unappealing, right? But when I presented it, they were like, oh, I love that. I didn't know about the due on sale clause, what you guys do to prevent that. And what happens if the due on sale clause gets called? So then about, an hour after talking to them on the phone, it was like eight at night, we talked to like nine. They were like, you know what, send me over contract. And then, yeah, they signed it the next day. Amazing. So the three reasons why a seller won't sell to you on creative finance, why are they? What are the three reasons? They need the money. Number one is not they need the money. No, What's the number one? It. They don't understand it. Yeah. That's it. I get so many people where I go, oh, but the seller said no, agent said no. Like number one reason, it's probably 95% of the reasons why a seller won't sell to you on creative finance is because somebody did a horrible job explaining it to them, right? It's the same thing when like you learned what creative finance was, Yeah. right? Like you went through real estate school, mm -hmm. you did all these things and you still were like, wait, what? Wait, what? I, wait, you can take over a mortgage and you can do this stuff and yeah. wait, do on sale clause? So even you, like everybody has to learn it. So if you can dumb it down for the seller and help them understand it like a third grader, you win every time. Yeah. And the problem with the agent is because the agent is so used to just going after cash deals, then when they present creative finance to the seller, the agent, like you said, d doesn't make it sound appealing, doesn't know how to pitch it properly, and honestly doesn't know all the answers to the objections. Yeah. So they are hoping the seller says, no, I'm not interested in that. Yeah. I've heard agents pitch creative finance to sellers and it's awful. And you're, I'm like, are you trying to kill this deal? And then you realize the answer is yes, <laughs> because subconsciously they can't answer the objections. Yeah. Right. So like, I don't want to answer any of the, the objections. I don't have the answer. So I'm going to try and deviate you. So Angelica actually pitched the sellers mm -hmm. and they were like, oh, she didn't explain it this way. Yeah. So how much did the seller get? They made 25K. 25K. What's the interest rate on the house? The interest rate is four flat. Four flat. Yeah. Four flat. Okay, great. And then the, is this the one where I paid you, you guys got a big old assignment fee on it? And I was like, you're pushing no, it too it's, hard? No, it's that's that, another one. That's one closed in two weeks. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this is a... How much did you guys make on this one? You got, you got 10. 10? 10? 10? Yeah. You yeah. split it. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, How much money did you make last year? Last year I made, I made $12,000 last year. Made $12,000 last year working at Starbucks. That's crazy. Okay. How did you meet me? I met your wife through the Starbucks line. Okay, 
And then, met my <laughs> wife. Okay. Met my wife through a Starbucks line. Yeah. And my wife was like, "Oh, you're an agent. Come on my team." And then my wife then pushed you to go work with Kevin, right? So your wife, I. So we met when I was in high school. I was 16, and uh -huh. she's been my regular for like three years at this point. And then I know exactly what she gets. And then she was like, hey, Josh. What does she get? She gets a venti ice matcha with soy milk and light ice. Yes. Every single time. <laughs> or sometimes she gets a grande mocha iced with soy milk, too. I, yeah, sometimes she gets both. Sometimes, sometimes she gets both. Yeah. Peach tea. Yeah, sometimes she'll get a peach tea. That's for me, though. For, oh. And Lainey likes a peach tea. And Lainey, yeah. yeah. Wow, bro. Paying yeah. attention. Dude. Good salesperson. Yeah. So she was like, you should become an agent. And I was like, great, I'll become an agent. And she goes, when you become an agent, come work with me. So then I started. So you go becoming an agent. I became an agent. This, this is my, my wife and I are completely different. I would never tell somebody to go be an agent. I literally, <laughs> like people, what, what should I do to get into real estate? I'm like, step one, don't become an agent. <laughs> and my wife is going around telling people to become agents. What the heck? Yeah. I got to text her and tell her we have a problem. <laughs> so, so you go become an agent. And then she's like, hey, come to this meetup. I meet Kevin at the meetup. And then she's doing some agent training with me. And she tells me that if you go work with Kevin, you and Kevin will be unstoppable. So then, now, now me and Kevin. Do you know how much? It's oh, it's basically March. March just ended. How much money have you made so far this year? This year I've made. The with this closing tomorrow, I'll have made I think twenty five k total. Amazing. On real estate. So you're on That's track to make a hundred grand this year. Hundred grand this year, and business is only picking up. You literally, you'll probably you and Ke I know Kevin will probably make six hundred thousand, seven hundred thousand this year is, mm -hmm. is my hope for him. And then um, you probably, as you ramp up, you'll probably go to like 150, maybe $200,000 a year. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. 200K is the goal. Expired listings. Yeah. Isn't it ironic that you became an agent so you could go and call other agents failures? <laughs> I'm a better agent. And then not actually be an agent in the transaction. In the transaction. Yeah. Yeah. If you're a real estate agent and you're paying attention to this, let me say this one more time to you. Josh is going to make one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars as the economy is trending downward. Everything is somewhat imploding. Do you guys see all the defaults in the commercial space right now? Oh, yeah. All the massive like apartment buildings, like billions of dollars of defaults. Um, advertisers, like in t the TV world for our TV show, the advertisers are spending forty percent of what they normally do. So they cut their ad spend by sixty percent. It's across the board. Everybody's there's layoffs everywhere, layoffs everywhere. Yet you are going to. 8x, maybe 12x your last year's income, and you did it by becoming an agent so you could call expired listings, which expired listings equals failed agents listings. You call them, call the seller and say, hey, how about you just let me take over your payments? Yeah. It's not that hard, is it? Not that hard at all. 19 year old can do it. 19, if a 19 year old, why is it that people that are 40, 50, 60 years old, you don't know the answer, but why do you think, <laughs> why do you think people don't do this, Kevin? They have a set limiting belief from the past and they just haven't unlearned that yet. Yeah. I think the advantage, you have, there's a disadvantage and an advantage for you guys being really young. The advantage is you haven't learned the wrong way. I learned the wrong way. I learned to trade my time for money, right? And I did that all the way through my 20s. I, got, I had wife and kids, so then everything in my mind is like, I need to go and make money so I can pay my bills next week. So you'll go exchange all of the that time for money. So. You didn't learn the bad habits necessarily. You probably saw your parents and everybody's like, go get a job, yeah. right? But you're 19, so you didn't learn. It wasn't ingrained in you like it was ingrained in most of us. The disadvantage to you is that when I call a seller, I've had real life experience. Mm -hmm. So it's really easy for me to talk to a seller and find common ground. Whereas you, like if you're 60, how can you not talk to any single human being on planet Earth? Like you have every common thread you could imagine. Kids, no kids, I've traveled here, I've done this, yes, da, 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 da. You don't, you, by that point, you have all the experience in the world to talk to people. And so for you, you are currently learning how to talk to people and navigate away from your age as an issue. Yeah. That's, do you, that's do you ever find problem. yourself as non-credible? So the, the, best, the best only benefit of being an agent is that when I'm calling these sellers, I can say I'm an agent. Yeah, no. okay, at least you've gone to a two-week class and spent a thousand dollars. Yeah, so the, so the sellers are like, oh, he's an agent, 
I never drop my age. It would probably kill the deal. Isn't that so funny? Yeah. That real estate agents get that much credibility? It yeah. is the most worthless license on the planet Earth. Yeah. It is. It's yeah. like you take an agent that just graduated real estate school, bro, they know nothing about real estate, right? When you graduated, did you even know your butt from a hole in the ground? Zero clue about anything. I had. But you were licensed. Yeah, I was licensed. And you, you could represent a seller on their largest asset in their life. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> if you're an agent and you hate me, make a, make a comment down below and say, I hate your gut space. But it's true. <laughs> and so um, agents are having a really hard time. Days on market going up for a lot of agents mm -hmm. is a negative thing. But days on market for you going up is a big benefit. Oh, yeah. Huge benefit. Have you, have you guys all looked at how many um, expired listings go on every single month in your respective counties. Do you know how much we have here? I think, so I was looking at it today, I think it was 600 when expired this month. 600 <laughs> list, are you okay? Oh yeah, no, I'm, I'm good. You need to eat more kimchi, bro. <laughs> um, so the um, 600 listings when expired just in Maricopa County. Yeah. Which means you have 600 sellers just like this that an agent failed to sell the property. Exactly, hmm. 600 opportunities. Why is it that the seller, why is it that the agent couldn't sell this property? Because she, w so I would present the offer, right? I probably called her, we were on the phone so many times, probably once every two weeks, that's when I would follow up. How much money did the agent, well, okay, so you answer that question first, then we'll go to the next question. So I would follow up with her every two weeks, mm -hmm. send her, and I'd send her an LOI, probably about once a month, and the LOI was, we'll give like 15K to the seller, and we'll pay your commissions, right? This agent wouldn't do it, she wouldn't present the offer. When I talked to Robin as the seller, she was like, oh, I haven't even seen that email yet. So she had no idea that we even presented this LOI. So then Robin ended up making the 10K that the agent didn't make. Robin made more money because the agent couldn't sell the house. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. The, the agent wouldn't even present the offer. So that really is the main answer. There, there's a couple answers there. So why, why did the agent have a hard time selling the house? Probably because the seller didn't have a lot of equity. No, they had basically none. They would have netted zero. Okay, so they had very little equity. So the seller, the agent doesn't know how to handle that situation. We have an, we have an agent class on April 21st in my office. We have about 300 agents coming in. I think we have 280 spots already filled. And we're going to do six hours on how to present creative finance to your seller. So if you're an agent, I have Eileen Brown, my longest uh, running escrow officer, and then Sean St. Clair, my real estate and contract attorney is coming in for six hours to teach on, on all this kind of stuff. So if you're an agent, um, we'll put a link in the description down below to sign up for those free classes. They're completely free. Why do we do them? Because I want to do deals with you. And the fact is that agent should have just let you do the deal. Yeah. And, and, and here's the problem agents. If, and this is a shout out also to David Green. Okay. Shout out to David Green. David Green made one of the most irresponsible resp comments on a YouTube video recently. It was so irresponsible. He says that um, sellers don't benefit from wholesaling and basically wholesaling is borderline illegal. I don't wholesale. I don't do that. Uh, I don't, I'm not like, I'm not going to say it's immoral, but in general, I just don't like the model. It's skirting lines of legalities. It is rarely beneficial for the seller of the property. Wholesalers will always tell you that they're working on a deal that's win-win. And sometimes I do think that happens, but the majority of the time, I think that the the seller would make a lot more money if they put their house on the MLS where everybody could see the property and other investors would have access to more inventory versus when they just sell it to, to a buyer's list and a guy like me gets instant access to those properties that I buy all of them and your normal investors just don't get to see them. So I'm not really a huge fan of the wholesale model. The people who come to me that want to make money in real estate, I'd rather sell their house for them and get them as much money as I could than just get them a quick sale and some investor is going to make money. And he says, sellers will always benefit, not always, he says, mo the majority of the time, the sellers benefit by listing a property with an agent, they get way more money. Well, guess what? The agent listed this property and 600 plus other agents listed other properties in Maricopa County, which all failed. And not only that, but a wholesaler called that agent every two weeks, every two weeks, every two weeks, and the agent got to a point where they just would rather have an expired listing than just listen to you and present an offer to the seller. Yeah. Did you guys not wholesale this sub two deal to me? Yeah. Okay. So wholesaling actually was a better benefit to the seller. In fact, a listing, pay attention to me, the listing failed and wholesaling succeeded here. 
So if you ever make a comment that wholesalers don't bring value to the industry, just means that you probably don't have a pulse on the industry. That's all there is to it. 600, who, what other market are we? Anybody in here? Brooklyn, stand up. Do you know how many expired listings are in Brooklyn, Chris? There's a lot. A lot? Yeah. Okay, so you got, the agent failed the listing. Mm -hmm. Why did the seller need to sell? Where were they going? What were they doing? They're moving to Tennessee. So, so there's the bunnies, right? Yeah. The seller had bunnies. They were like, we're moving. We don't want to have two house payments. Yeah. Why wouldn't the seller just turn this into a rental themselves? What, Kevin? Because they're not investors. That's the best answer ever. It, people, I, when I got into this business, I'm like, why doesn't the seller just like do what I'm trying to do? Turn this into an Airbnb or a rental or something. It's like sellers are not going to meetups and learning how to be real estate investors. And then the funniest thing, funny thing is this deal, this, this listing has been hit up by like at least 20, 30 other sub students. Like I know like just right on top, on the way here, I got a call from a guy, uh, another sub student named Chris, not him. Well, he was the one to call too. And I called too. Check this out. Uh, Kevin called it first. Oh, I remember this. I right. called it second. Yeah, yeah. Then he called it third. This is with the agent. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the agent. It's all about timing. So this is where you guys are trying to do a deal with an agent. By the way, this is, it, does this not just add more like concrete evidence that agents just don't know what the hell they're doing? <laughs> Sorry, agents. But here you are. You've got an agent that's struggling on a listing that could have solved the problem and gotten paid in the process. Right. And the only thing they were taught was put a stick in the yard, put it on the MLS and accept cash offers. That's the only thing they've learned, right? So outside of that, they don't know what they're doing. And um, so you called, Chris, Kevin called, agent said what? What did the agent say to you? Uh, no, the seller is not gonna go for that. No, basically being the gatekeeper. Yet we're standing on the back patio of the house that the seller went for creative finance. 100%. In a heartbeat. So and they were excited about it. They were, they were pumped. Yeah. They, they said, I can't believe that I've never heard of this before. They were super excited. And they had an agent for six months being reached out by Chris. Back at, you called them five, six months ago, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the text message. I, I know so many students that call this listing and like you probably recognize them too. On the way here, there's a guy, uh, you made an Instagram post about the Anderson Road. Somebody, somebody had my number and they asked me, hey, what were the terms? Because we were going after it. I'm happy mm -hmm. that you got it. Sellers needed to move to Tennessee. Mm -hmm. We close on this tomorrow? Tomorrow. Nice. <laughs> Who's doing the TC work on it? My TC and Molly. Okay, oh, wow, <laughs> this house, this house is great. This is awesome. I don't have to do any work here. I might, I might replace the carpet with like a linoleum. Okay, so I pro probably the only thing I'll do here is I'll take the carpet out and I'll just do this. I know where this linoleum comes from. This is a good linoleum. And I'll just do that in the bedrooms. The paint looks good, the doors look good. It's a three, these are three big bedrooms too. Yeah. Right? So, dude, this house is great. This is a great house. Like I would um, turn this in, this is a pad split. You could do a pad split here and just rent by the room and you could probably yeah. get, bring in, I don't know, 3,000, 4,000 a month. Yeah. But an Airbnb in this area, this is a freaking great house. Right on the corner lot, pool in the backyard. Did you pull it up? Did you see what this could bring in or what do you think? I, I have one just down the road. Oh, you'd have one down the road? Yeah. Would you, what's this it bringing in? Pool. I did 126K. Holy moly. Last year. There you go. This one's not as nice. nice as yeah, yeah. Okay, so you think 80 grand in a year? Conservative, yeah. I mean, that's great. Okay, so it's a four bed with, an, with a little guest house. Yeah. So it's a five bed house. Right. So I could bring in 80 grand in a year on an Airbnb and not even have to really do anything except furnish it. Mm -hmm. yeah. How much am I out of pocket on this deal? Like, I paid you guys 10 grand. Yeah. Seller got 25. So I'm into this 30, 40 grand after closing costs. Just about, the, yeah. What's the purchase price, do we know? I have no clue. Some, more Isn't it mortgage balance? Here's what's, know. guys, <laughs> everybody on IG, here's what's great about creative finance investors. None of us care about the purchase price. So every time I buy a deal, somebody's like, what'd you buy it for? I go, I, I have no clue. Yeah, I, I'm, I think we bought it for the mortgage balance and we gave the matter. Like, right, so we, because we buy for the mortgage balance, we really, we're not super concerned about any of that. Yeah. All, we care about interest rate. Yeah. Cash out of pocket uh -huh. and what the payment is. Mm -hmm. And then you add all that up and you compare it to what you can bring in and that's how we know if it's a deal or not. Yeah, super easy. We are, what's the address here? Yeah. Glendale, Arizona. A uh, new house that we just bought subject to. Kevin and Josh found this from an expired listing. So if you guys are trying to find deals, stop asking 
real estate agents. Because what happened here is Chris, Jean-Baptiste, Kevin Cho, uh, Josh, and a handful of other people tried to get the agent to sell the property subject to. And the agent's like, no, they're not interested. Turns out the agent actually never pitched it to the seller. So Josh called the seller an hour after it went um, unlisted or failed listing. Um, shout out to all the agents out there. Thank you guys for failing so hard in the market right now. <laughs> Thank you. We have another one that, we, that you're buying that's also a failed listing in Buckeye. When's that closing? In two weeks. Cool. Yeah. How, how, how can I, I'm trying to buy three deals this week. I need, actually I need, I, bought a, I bought a deal today in Texas, 3%. Yeah. You guys got deals? Where yeah, are we, we buying are. deals? We should yeah. be getting one signed today. From in what part, mar, part of the mar, uh, uh, area? Casa Grande. Yeah. Okay, I'll buy in Casa Grande. I told Please. Kevin I'll say yes to everything. <laughs> So let's let's talk about this. Let's talk about what my actual cash flow will be on this. Mm -hmm. So I'm tw I'm into a 25 to seller, 10 grand to you guys, 5,000 in miscellaneous. I'll probably have to put another 25 grand into furnishing, doing a little bit of judging, like maybe do linoleum and a couple little things. Yeah. So I'll be into the deal 60 grand. Okay. Okay. $60,000. If my payment is $2,500, Chris, do me give me some math here. Let me see your give me your calculator. So let's say that. My payment is 2,500. Okay, and then I've got management and utilities of 1,000. So it's gonna cost me $3,500 a month to operate this property, okay? If this property brings in, let's say 6,500, which is what it sounds like it can, 6,500, 78. Okay, cool. So this property could probably net around $2,000 a month. Wow. Okay, so think about that. What's my cash on cash return there? So $2,000 a month on- 50%? Yeah, it's gonna be somewhere around two. So $2,000 a month times 12 months is $24,000 return. Yeah. Divide that by my $60,000 investment. It's a 40% 40 cash on cash return. So most really? in, most investors are like, give me a 12% cash on cash return. This is a 40% cash on cash return. That's pretty good. Um, okay, so anything, any construction that we have to do here, probably paint, get rid of the green. Newer cabinet, so this is nice. The linoleum matches, which is also good. Washer and dryer in here. Dude, this is like, I, I don't have to spend much. This is great. 40% cash and cash return, no credit check. No, nobody, I never even had to talk to the seller. All I had to do is teach a badass how to go out and be a badass. Well, I didn't really talk to the seller either. <laughs> I know, okay, but that's what I'm saying. I taught a badass how to be a badass and help right. other people. Right. That's everybody's job. Chris's job, it's Wes's job. It's like, how do you take newer students and help them out right. and cultivate them and get them doing deals? That's your job. Right. This uh, is a house that Josh and Kevin sold to me on a sub two deal. You guys made 10,000 bucks on it. I hope this ends up being an Airbnb. Now, if you, here's the cool thing is like, let's say that I'm brand new and you need to do this this year and you gotta like venture out and take a chance. You have a, what's our goal, you and me? 50 deals in Arizona, 15 deals outside of Arizona. So 65 deals. We went up 65? Yeah, it's 65. You can do it. You're yeah. just building momentum. Oh yeah, yeah. No, so you and I will do 65 deals this year. Chris and I are gonna do at least 50. You're gonna do a lot of deals. That'll be great. You'll sign a lot, whatever. But at some point you go to Wes and you go, hey Wes, would you want to be my partner on this? Would you partner with somebody on this for 40%? Yeah. 60 grand out of pocket. You guys own the property together. Let's say you guys do a 50-50. You get an infinite cash and cash return because he brings the money to the table and you have nothing, like you need to do a couple of these yourself this year. Maybe a dozen. I'm doing, I'm doing two right now. Two. Where? I'm buying, well, I'm buying houses traditionally through, the, through, a, some, through a sponsor. Sponsor converts into the Oh, sponsor. okay, so more so, be nothing, basically. Yeah, so yeah. I, or I, a gator, I, somebody's yeah. gatoring for you. Yeah, so I've one in Vegas, I've one in Tampa. I'm already under contract in Vegas and we already saw the Love houses. it, so you've got somebody sponsoring <clears throat> your loan, yeah. which is gator, a gator strategy 4.0. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And you're going to hold, they're gonna hold the note or they're gonna partner with you? Uh, I'm gonna buy this stuff too, I'll get it on the road. Keep Love going it. as a partner. Isn't that great? Yeah. yeah. And I can pick and choose which house. And we're gonna now you, to you, to you know what's funny offers, is all of his friends went to college. <laughs> 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 I'm going to my friend's graduation in UC at UCLA this May. Do you have any uh, college student loans? No, no. Do you have any debt from no. college or anything? Just no. I, I don't have any debt. Will any of your friends with their college degree make any make more money than you this year? No. Not even close. Jeez, no Gosh. And the fact that you're like, oh yeah, somebody's sponsoring a loan, then I'm gonna buy a sub two, and I got one going here in Tampa, I got this. <laughs> is that not a deal? If it's a deal, close it. <laughs> it it's um, it's a, a buyer we have who buys some deals. 
Hey guys, we wanna give you a, a gift. My wife did a training on expired listings. How do you find expired listings? In fact, one, my wife convinced you to become an agent, right? Yeah. But we're gonna give you a training on how to find expired listings. So click a link in the description down below and you'll get a free training on how to find expired listings and what is the script on how to talk to them and make money like these guys combined. You guys may, might make a million dollars this year combined. Yeah. That's freaking crazy. Yeah. Wow. So click the link down below and we'll give you all that training. We want you guys calling these two boys. We'll give you guys their Instagram down in the description down below. And on your way down there, don't make me say this every time we make a video, hit the subscribe button because 81% of our people that watch 4 million plus views a month, 81% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel. So please show my team that you love them and that you appreciate them putting all this hard work in to make these videos and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.